Happy New Year and welcome to The Advocate on PLUS TV Africa. Your reminder that important conversations are among the necessary truths for a sinner society. Today, I'm talking about the legacy President Buhari is looking to leave once his tenure comes to an end. Helen educates us on the need for monitoring applied behavior analysis services in Nigeria. Adenrili Edwards is here to tell us about the silent killer in our midst. And finally, Elijah brings up the never-ending discussion on gender equality. As always, your panelists are here to share ideas aimed at provoking thoughts with no holes barred. Stay with us. Visualizing the emerging legacy of President Muhammadu Buhari. When asked what would be his legacy during a rare interview last year, President Muhammad Buhari knew well to concede that responsibility to Nigerians, even though he begged to be assessed fairly. As the administration enters its final and usually least impactful spell for obvious reasons, many Nigerians, I suppose, are gearing up to exercise that responsibility. Until his historic victory as the seventh democratically elected president of Nigeria in 2015, the then General Muhammad Buhari was the best president Nigeria never had. Such was a wide perception held of the man until he was assigned what was easily his life's ambition, presiding over Nigeria as a democratic leader. But between then and now, that hope and optimism that encircled his persona has given way to despondency and disillusionment. The reason is not far-fetched. For a man that ran a popular campaign around the tripod of stand, stamping out corruption, decimating Boko Haram, and economic recovery, it is crushing for Nigeria and Nigerians that under his watch, Nigeria has fared worse on each of those indices. Some have argued that the worst form of corruption in a multicultural setting like Nigeria is presiding over an exclusionary government that appears to alienate people of other ethnic and or religious persuasion. Yet, that has been the order of the Muhammad Buhari regime. Despite being a former military general and leveraging same to contend that Nigeria would be safer under him pre-2015, we have witnessed a Nigeria with shrunken territories due to the activities of non-state actors in various parts of the country. Boko Haram has not only defied decimation, it has arguably grown with a splinter cell, ISWAP, proving even more deadly. And as one travels from one region of the country to the other, a new wave of insecurity is met. Banditry in the Northwest, sessionist tensions in the Southeast, militancy in the Niger Delta, Boko Haram insurgency in the Northeast. The economic scorecard doesn't look good either, with our slipping into the poverty capital of the world according to the global poverty clock under the administration, being the clearest evidence of that. As we begin the new year, with time no longer on the side of the President Muhammad Buhari administration. The question then is, will some, if not all the above, become the defining pillars of the Buhari legacy? From my cautiously optimistic standing, there is no reason not to resolve that poster in the positive. But what do you say? Wow, Raymond. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say these things before I respond to your ideas on yeah. President Buhari. Yeah. Let me first of all tell President Buhari, this is the first time I'm saying this to him directly. I know if he's watching us, yeah. happy birthday, Baba, even though it's in areas. Yeah. Uh, so the Lord is your strength. So however, I have these things to say. I've been looking for an opportunity to meet with Buhari. If I have one, I have some things to tell him. And okay. uh, let me say it now. You talked about the three things, stamping out corruption. Mm -hmm. Somehow, Baba Buhari, have you noticed that most of your policies are like throwing away baby with the bathwater. You want to fight corruption, good intention, but most everybody suffer because you want to fight corruption. And then we have another one, the, the second one you talked about, uh, remind me. Economy. Economy. No, economy. no before economy, there is one that I quite about security. Yeah. Good. Insurgency, very big one. Yeah. Yes, we know he's a general, a very, very uh, tough general, yeah. but times have changed okay. and times will always change. You can't use the strategies you use during those days as a military general then mm -hmm. in, in keeping the peace to keep peace in this ideological dr driven uh, situation now they said guns can kill terrorists but education 
we kill terrorism. So what these people need is adequate education, carrot and stick method. Yeah. So these are things. It's not only buying super to cano. Today we buy super to super, 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 super cano aircraft, yeah. this and that. Not only that. What are they doing to reorientate the mindset of the people there? And why doing the right things? And then the other one of economy. Yeah. Uh, well, to make Nigeria an economic giant, its policies, you cannot move the economy without involving the youth. Look at what happened during the Sorosoke saga. Yeah. The youth were trying to talk to him. You didn't want to listen. The next thing was to punish us by, by what? Banning Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Twitter. thereby, uh, let me, I will not even come to Twitter yet. That was another. Thereby disenfranchising us from participating in the global economy. Yeah. Why must it be only crude oil that we think of exporting or importing? Do you know we can actually export knowledge? That's why we have the dot, we're in the dot com era. Yeah. You can actually be in, the, in your room and then solve group, uh, problems yeah. that the company can use there because of our policies. It's difficult to send money outside or even receive money inside. How can you now grow the economy? How? So these are the things you should look at. And number four, too, I, I, this one is not in the list, but okay. I see it as a behavioral approach. Our president, our dear president, is sometimes swift to dealing with persons from some certain region when they speak up against the government or when they misbehave yes. as a no nonsense general he is speak to send soldiers there and or do things to call them to order but when it comes to giving sanction <coughs> to countries to to to, to impress this uh, to um to uh, uh, enhance this perf uh, perception that we are truly the giant of africa let me give you an example it's like found one thing the issue of xenophobic attack on Nigerians, that was uh, 2019, if I'm yes. not mistaken. In South Africa. In South Africa. What did he do? Imagine you, you were the one that went to visit the South African president. Somebody committed a crime or, or killed your person, and then you, who is supposed to visit who? And you went there. For what? Why can't you? I expected him to take a, a stern move against South, Af uh, South Africa. Maybe by expelling this uh, ambassador or something mm -hmm. from the country or something, I don't know. Yeah. Or, or another instance, let me give another instance. See what happened in Ghana. Imagine the Ghanaian had the opportunity or had the ref country to raise down a Nigerian building owned by the Nigerian government in Ghana. Yeah. And then what did the president do about it? Uh, the president of Ghana apologized. Why would you do that? You, we need to send, like, build send like, a strong, strong message. message. Have a strong, stop begging. Mm -hmm. I, but, but kudos to him anyway. I love the way he handled the issue of. Uh, this is what called reciprocity in diplomacy. Mm -hmm. The issue of uh, banning, uh, the ban was from coming to Canada or something over the yeah, Ubico yeah, virus, and they responded. Okay, and so I okay, uh, should keep okay. it up. But like I said, some people believe that uh, it's too late for Buari to do anything that he has not done before in the last, that he has just one year. Yeah. So if he cannot do anything in the last seven six, years, yeah, six, what can he do now? Well, I, I believe that uh, whenever a man wakes up, it's his day. <laughs> I will give Buari a benefit of that. Baba Buari, with due respect, sir, please, you have one more year to go. Just try and do the needful. Do something very right. If possible, get young, smart guys around you. You mustn't be working with... It's not working with millennials. There's, no dis, there's a disconnect between the government and millennials. Yeah. That's why some of their policies are not youth-friendly. It doesn't make sense. So, so Helen, is there any possibility that we I, imagine I, the gas is going to change? For me, year? you know, I think the total... The whole four years has been a waste of time. Six years, actually. Six years has been a waste of time. Personally, because I have not seen every single Chibok girl returned home. Mm. Wow. Simple, I mean, I'm not really concerned about the economy. I'm yeah. not concerned about what I'm concerned about yeah. Nigerian parents mm -hmm. who have not seen their children in close to seven years. I don't think any Nigerian should go through that. And for that, he has failed for me. Anyway, for speaking about Chibok years, I know some people will say, is it Buhari? This was during Good Luck Jonathan. It's, it's irrelevant. But the truth of the matter, what I will say is, Let's learn to take responsibility. Good luck has done his own, whether he's perfect or not. He made his mistake, he made his error, he made his successes, he made his failures, he has gone. Now, Baba Boy, what are you going to do with the time you have now? No, but he so, promised us. He, he promised us. That's what made me vote for him. The girls were going yes. to yes. I voted for and him. I, and government, then he should do something about him. It's, it's it not almost too late. Is in the saddle today. It's, it's, yes, because it government is continuous. Presidents and his people, the presidents mm -hmm. should take responsibility. They kept it was PDP before they blame uh, good luck, they blame PDP, they blame the youth, they blame Twitter. What are they blaming again? COVID, COVID. Every successive um, government blames each other the government one before, before them. Mm -hmm. For me, my I mean, what really upsets me is the fact that there seems to be a lack of strategy for 
most of the policies. I don't understand the backdrop upon which they're making a lot of their decisions. So take, for instance, the amnesty given to Boko Haram. So you are rewarding them. There doesn't seem to be any plan to educate them, to reintegrate them into the society. You've just rewarded them and they've gone back to doing the same thing. I just don't understand how that kind of decision could have been could have, could have well, been well, made. Well, for me, I'm, I'm happy, like I pointed out, I'm happy that when uh, that journalist asked him that question, that what would be the Boko Haram legacy, he quite understood that it is not for him to call, that it is for Nigeria who are going to look back at his, what would be his eight years, eight years in government and take a decision one way or the other. Well, I bet you and, I, I, and I think Nigerians are quite informed about what this government has done, and at the right time, they will paint that legacy. Well, I beg to him. disagree on that. Baba Buari, I will advise you like a, like, like a son. <laughs> Let me just advise you as a son. Baba, please, you should be concerned about your legacy. Forget about what Nigerians think or not. Do the right things. You know what to do. Do it. Yeah. And let me just take this for me. No this and no peace. Get a Nigerian youth. Get good Nigerian youth. Many of them, they could Root come them. work with you. It's just one year. You could do something. Change your history. Change your story. It doesn't matter what has, done, has been done in the past six years. If you can do the right things within this one year, even if you cannot do all, do something tangible that will be a build up for the next administration. Okay, well, um, it's one year to go, and then we'll see what becomes of the Buhari legacy ultimately. Helen is next after the break. <laughs>